Hello friends, in the previous videos, we showed you how to solve a 2D steady state heat conduction problem in Cartesian coordinates using finite difference method. In this video, we're going to solve a 2D transient heat conduction problem in Cartesian coordinates using FTCS or forward time centered space finite difference method. Our objectives are to present a simple 2D transient heat conduction problem with no heat generation. We will discretize the domain into say a 4x4 grid. We consider two time steps and solve the problem using forward time center space or FTCS finite difference method. We will then vary the grid spacings and time steps and resolve the problem and obtain temperatures inside the domain. Our domain is a copper plate 1 meter long and 1 meter wide. The thermal diffusivity of the material as indicated by alpha equals 1 e to the negative 4 meter square per second. The plate is initially at 200 degrees Celsius. At time t equals 0 onwards, all the four sides of the copper plate are maintained at 100 degrees Celsius. Accordingly, the temperature of the plate will start dropping. Our objective is to find the temperature profile inside the domain at various times. The X and Y coordinates are shown on the left hand side of the sketch. The general heat conduction equation in 3D Cartesian coordinates is given as dou square t by dou x square plus dou square t by dou y square plus dou square t by dou z square plus g over k equals 1 over alpha times dou t over dou t, where the uppercase t represents the temperature and is a function of the spatial coordinates x, y, z and time t. Alpha is the material property called the thermal diffusivity and is given in meter square per second. Alpha equals k over rho c, where k is the thermal conductivity of the material in watts per meter kelvin. Rho is the density of the material in kilograms per meter cube. C is the specific heat capacity of the material in joules per kilogram kelvin. And G is the volumetric rate of internal heat generation in watts per meter cube. We assume that the material thermal conductivity is homogeneous and isotropic in the, inside the medium. Accordingly, the material thermal conductivity K is uniform over the entire domain. For 2D transient heat conduction with no heat generation, equation 1 reduces to a simpler form. We assume that the temperature does not vary along the z direction when compared with the x and y directions. The heat generation term g equals 0. Accordingly, we get dou square t by dou x square plus dou square t by dou y square equals 1 over alpha times rho t over dou t, and t is a function of x, y, and t. This equation is rearranged as dou t over dou t equals alpha times dou square t by dou x square plus dou square t by dou y square. t is a function of x, y, and t, and the lowercase t time is greater than or equal to 0. To solve this partial differential equation, we need one initial condition and four boundary conditions, which are given below. Initial condition t at x comma y at t equals 0 equals t in. The boundary conditions are t at x comma y equals 0 comma t equals t1, t at x equals l comma y comma t equals t2, t at x comma y equals w comma t equals t3, and t at x equals 0 comma y comma t equals t4. Here l is the length of the domain in x direction and w is the length of the domain in y direction. To obtain temperature, we need to solve the above PDE. We will utilize finite difference method to solve the above PDE. To do so, we need to replace the partial derivatives with finite difference approximations. We replace the time derivative with first order forward difference and the space derivatives with second order center difference approximations. Accordingly, we get 
t i comma j n plus 1 minus t i comma j n over delta t equals alpha times t i minus 1 comma j n minus 2 times t i comma j n plus t i plus 1 comma j n by delta x square plus t i comma j minus 1 n minus 2 times t i comma j n plus t i comma j plus 1 n by delta y square. For simple simplicity, let us assume delta x equals delta y. Also, let us assume that alpha times delta t by delta x squared equals d, where d is the diffusion number. Accordingly, we get equation 5, which is shown as t i comma j n plus 1 equals t i comma j n plus d times t i minus 1 comma j n plus t i plus 1 comma j n minus 4 times t i comma j n plus t i comma j minus 1 n plus t i comma j plus 1 n. Equation 5 is the finite difference approximation of the original partial differential equation we were trying to solve. Here i represents the node location along the x direction and j represents the node location along the y direction and n represents the time step. The above approximation is called forward time centered space or FTCS method. This is an explicit method. Hence temperatures Tij at future times n plus 1 can be directly obtained based on Tij's at present times as shown in equation 5. Explicit methods are conditionally stable. The stability criteria here is given as D it is lesser than or equal to 0 0.25 for 2D, 2D problems where delta x equals delta y. Also, time step delta t needs to be small based on the accuracy desired. The error using the above finite difference approximation is of the order of delta t plus the order of delta x square plus of the order of delta y square. Now let us discretize the 2D domain into a 4x4 grid equally spaced as shown below. We have 25 nodes in total. Temperatures are fixed at the boundary nodes as shown earlier. Our interest is on the 9 interior nodes from 2,2 to 4,4. Let us apply equation 5 on the 9 interior nodes. Accordingly, we get t 2,2 n plus 1 equals t 2,2 n plus d times t 1,2 n plus d t 3,2 n minus 4 times t 2,2 n plus t 2,1 n plus t 2,3 n for i equals 2, j equals 2. Likewise, for the other nodes, we can get similar equations as shown here. For the first time step, let n equal 0, we get t 2,2 1 equals t 2,20 plus d times t 1,20 plus t 3,20 minus 4 times t 2,20 plus t 2,10 plus t 2,30 for node i equals 2 and j equals 2. Similarly, for the other nodes, we can get equations as shown here. Let delta t equals 100 seconds. Note, we have chosen a higher value for illustration purposes. So it can be seen on the graphical um, portion. For accuracy purposes, we, use, we need to use smaller value of delta t. Delta x equals L over nx equals 1 over 4 equals 0 0.25 meters. Since delta y equals delta x, we have delta y equals 0 0.25 meters. Then the diffusion number d equals alpha times delta t over delta x square or 1 times 10 to the negative 4 times 100 divided by 0 0.25 square which is equal to 0 
which is lesser than 0 0.25. So we meet the stability criteria. Substituting the diffusion number D and the initial and the boundary temperature values into the previous set of equations, we get T2,2 at 1 as 168 degrees Celsius. And we can get temperatures for the other nodes as shown here. For the second time step, let n equals 1, we get T2,2,2 equals T2,2,1 plus D times T1,2,1 plus T3,2,1 minus 4 times T2,2,1 plus T2,1,1 plus T2,3,1 for node I equals 2, J equals 2. Similarly, we can get equations for the other nodes. Substituting the diffusion number D and previous boundary and, pre, uh, and previous and boundary temperature values into the previous set of equations, we get T2,2,1 equals 151.36 degrees Celsius. Similarly, we can get temperatures for the other nodes as shown here. Likewise, we can find the temperatures at these interior nodes at the next time step by choosing n equals 2 and so on. Graphical results are presented using MATLAB for this case. Using MATLAB or other software, we can develop codes for a general case where the number of grid spacings and time steps can be varied as desired and solutions obtained accordingly. We will now go to the MATLAB program. Here, alpha, which is, the, which is the thermal diffusivity, is given as 1 e to the negative 4 meters squared per second. The total time is given as 200 seconds. The number of time steps is 2. So delta t equals 200 over 2, that is 100 seconds. For illustration purposes, to have a clear picture on the graphical uh, portion, we have used uh, large delta t values. But to, to obtain accuracy, the delta t value needs to be very small. Uh, the length of the copper plate is 1 meter and we are dividing it in a number of segments. And the number of segments here is 4. Also, uh, accordingly, the delta x equals x length by nx, which is 1 over 4 is 0 0.25. We use, since delta x equals delta y, so delta y is also 0 0.25. The temperatures at the four sides are maintained at 100 degrees Celsius. Time t greater than or equal to 0, and the initial temperature is 200 degrees Celsius. Let's run this program and get the results. Our solution is stable as the diffusion number we get is 0 0.16 which is lesser than 0 0.25. The temperature at the initial condition is shown here. At all the four sides the temperature is maintained at 100 degrees Celsius. At the interior nodes the temperature is maintained is initially uh, kept at 200 degrees Celsius. A time at the first time step when time equals 100 seconds the temperature obtained at the very at the various interior nodes as shown here and at time t equals 200 seconds for the second time step the temperatures at the various interior, interior nodes are shown here and these values match our power point uh, presentation values. Now let's go back to the graphical results. So um, on the left hand side top portion we have the initial condition given. Here, the sides are maintained at 100 degrees Celsius, all four sides of the plate, and the initial 
temperature at the interior nodes are kept at 200 degrees Celsius, which is what is represented here. At the final conditions, the boundary temperatures remain the same at 100 degrees Celsius, but there is variation on the interior nodes, nodal temperatures as shown here. The same is reflected on the right hand side in an animated view. And the color scale is shown on the right hand side. Now let's go back and vary our grid spacings. Let's change the total time to say 1600 seconds and number of time steps as 160 and number of spatial grids as say 15 along the x direction and the same number along the y direction as well. We will then, the temperatures remain the same, the initial temperature as well as the temperature, the boundary temperatures at the sides of the plate. We will rerun this program. The solution is still stable as D is 0.225, which is lesser than 0.25. Let's look at the graphical results. On the left hand side top portion the initial condition is shown the temperatures at the interior nodes are maintained at 200 degrees C initially and the boundary temperatures are maintained at 100 degrees Celsius for all times. At the final condition the boundary temperatures are still maintained at 100 degrees Celsius, but there is variation on the in, uh, interior temperatures as this plate starts uh, cooling from uh, 200 degrees Celsius for initial temperature. The color scale is shown on the right. An animated view is shown on the right hand side. Here we set the temperature, total, total, sorry, total time to 1600 seconds and this program is going to run until we get 1600 seconds. There is a continuous variation of the temperature. The temperature keeps dropping within the plate with time as shown here. The right hand side shows the temperature scale. Here the temperature varies from 100 degrees C at the sides to a final temperature above of about 106 degrees Celsius at the center portion. We will now go back to the power point. To summarize, in this video we presented a 2D transient heat conduction problem in Cartesian coordinates the temperature at each of the four sides of the square copper plate is fixed. The initial temperature in the domain is known using final difference method, which is FTCS or forward time center space method. We discretize our domain and obtain temperatures inside the domain at various times and solve the problem. We varied the grid spacings and time steps and presented the results using MATLAB. In future videos, we can explore more challenging problems. If you have any questions or comments, please post it. Thanks for watching.